Hello everybody, Crystal Player 101, and today I'll be doing something a little bit different. I am Crystal Clear 101. Welcome back to the channel. And this is not going to be a review. Matter of fact, I'm actually doing something different on this channel. I figure I'd do something that might be a little more interesting, a little bit more fun. I figure I'd do a little size comparison. Now, the previous video, I did a video review on this uh, Rebels Snap Tight UNSC Pelican. Well, the fun thing is that their Halo models are actually in scale. The Warthog is in 1 to 32 scale, and the Pelican right here is in 1 to 100 scale. Now, the fun thing is another company, Bandai, they've been doing Star Wars model kits in primarily 1 to 72 scale, 1 to 144 scale. And with a couple other vehicles, notably like the Rebel Snowspeeder and the Imperial ATST Walker, they've done those in 1 to 48 scale. Well, some people have done some size comparison of vehicles, aircraft to those vehicles, see how big a vehicle from the Star Wars universe would be compared to real world vehicles. Well, I'm going to do something similar with this one. I'm going to compare. Well, considering I don't, well, in this case, I don't have any real world vehicles like tank or anything like that. I do, however, have a selection of aircraft I can compare this up against. And just get an idea just how big this ship really is in the real world. Now, before I do that, let's go ahead and start with something that'd be a little more comparable. It's, this is still in the realm of fiction here, but. This is just for fun. This is just for comparison. I'm going to bring in a few vehicles from the Halo universe. Now, these are all from the McFar McFarlane brand Micro Ops line. And these are all 1 to 100 scale. These two were in the review, the Warthog and the Mongoose. Now, another one I also had in the video was the UH-144 Falcon. Alright. Again, all these are 1 to 100 scale. Now, a couple others I will go ahead and bring in just for size comparison. Let's bring in a Covenant Ghost. A single occupant exoatmospheric insertion vehicle or SOIV. And one that will remain for the majority of this video is this. It is a ODST. In this case, it's the Rookie. And the reason I have, do I have him stay in this video? Is this is your average human being. This is a non augmented human. It's not a Spartan. It's a standard soldier. Well, he will be our reference point just for scale. Now, all of these right here are 1 to 100 sales, so we can get some idea of just how big this is. Now, now I got the fictional vehicles out of the way. Let's go ahead and get them off screen just for right now. And let's get the mongoose. All right. Now, for the next... If you miss that, I'm going to be grabbing random assorted aircraft that I have over here. Bear in mind, everything I have, I'm going to be presenting is in 1 to 100 scale. I'll tell the aircraft what Air Force it's from and, if possible, what year that particular aircraft is supposed to be from. Not as far as its original when it entered service, just the year this that, that, of that particular one. Alright, just for fun, here's the first one. A Polish Air Force MiG-21, specifically a MiG-21MF. Now this particular example from the Polish Air Force is from 1999. Now this, 
kind of a small fighter. Um, compared to some other aircraft, kind of small. But I, um, also down here, I will try and provide side views and top views of the aircraft up against this. But, I mean, this is a classic um, Soviet era Cold War era fighter. And just to see one of these right up against a Pelican, this gives me an idea, a good idea about the size of the Pelican, seeing this up against it. But truly classic, a truly classic fighter to see up against a Pelican. Now let's move this off to the side for right now. Another one I'll bring in. Um, since I brought in the MiG-21, you have to bring in its rival from the 60s, in this case, a U.S. Air Force F-4E Phantom II. And this was a large, this is a large fighter. And getting an idea, having this right up against a Peloton, you get an idea just how large this Peloton is. And this is a large fighter right here. Not only is this a large fighter, it's also a fairly popular fighter. Um, as far as countries still using it, I don't know. Well, let me rephrase that. I don't remember right offhand. Um, I'll also list a few countries right down here in text. Listen, a few, like three to five countries at least that still use this aircraft. But, again, another classic fighter seeing this up against this gives you a pretty good idea just how large the Pelican really is. Oh, let's see. What's another one I'm going to grab? Oh, alright. And I would go ahead and state that some of these I do have. Well, I got them. They did not have landing gear. This will be the first example. Alright. But here is a Russian Air Force Sukhoi Su-25, specifically an Su-25TM. And this particular example is with the 760 IISAP. And do correct me if I mispronounce this, the, uh, the Petsk Air Base in Russia. This particular example. Um, Russian equivalent to the A-10. A very good close air support platform. And fairly good size aircraft. Um, they are covering fraud foot. But, um, a classic close air support aircraft. Good size. And up against a Pelican, this, it makes this look absolutely small in comparison. Alright, next one I am going to grab, oh, what am I going to take? Oh, okay, let's get an interesting one out of the way. And until I came across this one, um, I actually never knew of this one, but here we go. Let's bring in a fairy gannet. This particular example is from, from the Royal Navy, circa 1970. Originally intended for World War II, never didn't do it. There was no testing of the aircraft till after the war. And then it was primarily used for anti-submarine warfare. But good size aircraft. Again, up against a Pelican, it's rather small, but again, it's a, it's a good size prop aircraft. Now, let's see, oh, that's another one I'm going to get a hold of. Let's see. Ah, here's a good one. Now, if it'll... Cooperate with me here. Uh, 
All right, here we go. A very popular and classic American fighter. Let's bring in an F-16. Now, a fairly, a fairly small aircraft. As a matter of fact, I think this would be more, maybe more of a medium-sized aircraft. But still, very popular, very classic fighter. Uh, this particular example is with the Polish Air Force, circa 2006. And looks absolutely dwarfed when compared to this Pelican right here. And just seen something, and I've seen a number of F-16s in my time. And... Just seeing this right next to this and actually give me a give me a really good idea just how big this pelican really is. Alright. Let's see. Let's see, let's go ahead and grab this one. Now let's go ahead and bring in a U.S. Air Force F-22 Raptor. A large jet, a large jet fighter. I do not remember the specs on this fighter right here, dimension-wise. But, again, it's a fairly large, it's a very large fighter right here. Let's bring it down, just so I can go ahead and have the nose. And a shot. Also, put our ODST right here. And seeing this right next to it gives an idea just how large this Raptor is. I know I'm sounding like a broken record by this point, but it's still I still find this fascinating when I'm seeing something modern and current up against something from the realm of fiction. Alright. Now with that one out of the way. Let's grab this one. Now I have stood next to one of these. This is without doubt my favorite jet of all time. But let's bring it in. A McDonnell Douglas F-15A Eagle. Now, this particular example is circa 1985 U.S. Air Force. Again, very large fighter. Very classic fighter from the 70s, 80s, 90s. And I'm proud to say I have been able to stand next to one of these. And so, seeing one of my favorite fighters up against... Well, not up against, but next to a aircraft that design-wise, I actually do like. I may not be a fan of this particular design of the Pelican, but seeing a real-world aircraft against a fictional world aircraft, I still find this rather fascinating. Let's see. Oh, no, no few more left here. Let's see. Alright. Let's go ahead and bring in another fairly modern aircraft. Let's bring in an F-A-18E Super Hornet. A modern take, a more modern updated take on the standard F-A-18 Hornet. The Wingspan was increased. I forgot what percentage it was increased. But it's much larger than the standard F-18. Specifically the F-18C. But I have seen a number of these taken off. I've seen some of these on the ground. And standing next to one of these, I get an idea just how large this Pelican is. And I still find it rather awe-inspiring.
just to see just how dwarfed some some real world aircraft is compared to a aircraft from a video game. All right. Now let's bring in another one. Now let's bring in a Sukhoi Su-24MK Fencer D of the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force. Specifically, this one's from the 72nd Tactical Fighter Squadron based in Shiraz Air Base in Iran. Basically, this is a attack aircraft, a light bomber type deal. But if need be, it can function as a fighter, fighter bomber. And this is a large aircraft. And compared to others I have compared this up against to so far, this is the one that comes close to size-wise for it. But still looks rather small. Matter of fact, to me, it almost looks about medium size compared to this Pelican here. Now... Just seeing this, again, I find it amazing just how small, when you compare it to this, it looks. Let's see, I believe I have one more aircraft. Now, some may find this one a bit offensive. This doesn't bother me for simple fact it's that I can admire for historical reasons, but a Messerschmitt BF 110 G4, circa German Luft, circa the German Luftwaffe, 1944, and this was the standard German Luftwaffe night fighter for most of the war. Prior to the war, it was considered a heavy fighter destroyer. But after events in the Battle of Battle of England, this was reduced from being a daytime fighter to a night fighter, as it was seen to be considerably more effective. And for this for a aircraft of the Second World War, this is a very large fighter. And in case you're curious as to why I say someone find it offensive, yes, it does have the swastika on the tail, as you will see in the pictures right down here. But I don't mind that for simple fact that it does make the aircraft more historically accurate. To be honest, I probably would have been a little more disappointed if it didn't have them. Because I do like my aircraft as historically accurate as possible. Let's see. Let's see, that is it as far as the aircraft are concerned. Now let's go ahead and bring them all in in one shot. And what, there is one more I did almost forget to put in here. So I figured I'd go ahead and make this separate little short video just for this real quick. But here's the final one and it's a helicopter. But I have an AH-64D Longbow Apache. Now, fairly large helicopter. And when compared to the Peloton right here, it looks very minuscule, it's very tiny. Matter of fact, let's put the ODST right up next to the Apache. And, again, when this helicopter is put up right up against this Pelican, it looks very minuscule. It's very, very small. But, I figured before I go on to the final shot, I'd go ahead and show a, another, another aircraft I happen to have. In this case, it was a helicopter. Well, I thought this was a rather fun and interesting video to do. I mean, it's one thing when you know what the dimensions on a fictional 
vehicle or a fictional aircraft is from a video game or a movie. But when you have the ability to actually be able to compare it to something from the real world, something that is to the same scale as said vehicle, then to me this just takes it to a whole other level. Yes, it was nice that the Microops line from the beginning was one to one hundred scale. This is from two thousand. These are from two thousand twelve. But the fact that a fairly recent model is the same scale as these right here, and having the ability to compare all the rest of these aircraft to this, to just get an idea of sheer scale just makes it rather awe-inspiring. But again, I thought this was just a fun little video to do, video to make. But if you found this video to be rather interesting, informative, be sure to give a thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below. Tell me what you think. And that is it for this video. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.